Okay, the purpose of this video is to review uh, some uh, skills and strategies for solving problems that go along with the uh, math uh, standards 6NS, number sense, C8, which involves points on a coordinate plane and use an absolute value to find distances. Now, I was looking at my Mastery Connect uh, assessments that my students have already taken. And uh, you can see here where I've got the, uh, where I had the file up, looking at it earlier. And the area where I had the fewest students hit Mastery was for uh, 6 and SC8. And I thought I would go ahead and make a little video to reteach some of those uh, things that we uh, talked about because Mastery Connect is a form of assessment to let you see where your students are at and I was able to see where my students were at and I think I can do a better job. I think that we can get better than what we did. And on Monday when they come in, uh, we'll do uh, some work to see if um, they, did it, if they did indeed learn what I want them to learn because I don't want to move on to uh, and leave this standard behind if I don't have as many students as possible uh, hitting mastery there. So the first thing I want to point out is that I'm using virtual manipulatives which um, are free, they're online, they're from glencoe.com and I went to the sixth grade math manipulatives and I'm going to click on background and the background that I want for the work mat is the coordinate grid. That's what my students have been working with. So we're going to use the coordinate grid, this one. Now, on the Master Connect activity that my students worked on, they were presented with a coordinate grid just like this one. And then they had some points identified for them, and they had to um, talk about distance and things like that. And I'm going to go ahead and try to make it as much like that one as I can. Now, one of the points was W. And W was located at negative 1, negative 4. Now, negative 1 being the very first coordinate, and I'll write that out over, well, I guess I'll write out over here. If it'll let me. Negative, negative 1, comma, negative 4. Now, that width is way too big. It's way too big. And I think I'm going to go ahead and clear that because it just does not look good at all. Okay, so I'm going to start over. Anyhow, so I'm going to make my coordinate at negative 1, my first coordinate, negative 1, and then uh, negative 4. And this coordinate grid, it is not marked. And so I'm just going to have to count over. Now, this point here is the point of origin. This is 0. So I'm going to start here. be like negative 1 right here. Now, the x-axis uh, coordinate is always listed first. Negative 1 would be here. And then negative 4 on the y-axis, I'm going to go down. So Here's negative 1, so I'm going to be on this line. But here's negative 1 here, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So I want to put my point right here, and we'll call that W. And I'll go ahead and put the coordinate here a little bit. Hopefully I'm not going to be taking up space that I'm going to need in a few minutes. So negative 1, negative 4. My other coordinate I need to locate is um, G. And G is located at negative 1, 3. So here's negative 1, but for positive 3 on the y-axis, I have to go up 3. 1, 2, 3. So here is where G would go. And so the G is located at negative 1, and then that's a positive 3. And I apologize that the pen isn't working that great, but hopefully uh, you can still see what I'm trying to get across. Now, the item had to do with this. It had to do with uh, how far apart is point G from point W. And there are a few ways that you could do to solve this problem. You could actually count the units in between. Or you could do a problem using absolute value. I'm going to first count the units, and then uh, we'll check our answer using the absolute value. Now, I know I'm not going to miss it because if you count them, you see them right there, you know. So here would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there are 7 units apart. 7 units apart. So I'll go ahead and write that down. I'll 
apologize for not asking how to write it. Now let's go if I can go ahead and, and, and use what we have here. We just, just have the coordinates and not the the grid the coordinate uh, plane here. If we just had the coordinates, how could we solve it? One of the things I've been telling my students is that if you see that you have a uh, number in common, like here we have negative one, negative one, then what you need to focus on is absolute value of the numbers that are not in common, in this case negative four and three. The reason that we don't have to worry about uh, negative one and negative one is because that just simply tells us that the line that we're focusing on can be found at negative one on the x-axis. And just to kind of let you see what that would look like, if I was over here, well, come on. Well, that ain't gonna work for me. So I'm going back to my pen. So I would go, it just shows us that it's located at negative one. So here we're focusing on the three and the negative four. So the absolute value of three and the absolute value of negative four. Now we've got to figure out what operation are we going to use. Are we going to add or subtract those values? And because we're moving from one uh, quadrant to another, in this case the second quadrant to the third quadrant, because we're moving from one quadrant to another, we're going to add. And if you'll check it out, if it helps you see that better, when you move from one quadrant to another, it makes almost like a plus sign. It helps you remember it that way. And you know that you're going to be moving from one quadrant to another because the sign changes. Here's positive, here's negative. Because they're different signs, you know that you're going from one quadrant to another, so you'll have to add them. So the absolute value of 3 is 3. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4. And so here we have 3 plus 4 is 7. And so 7 units. So that's one way. Now, I want to talk about why I think some of my students have uh, been missing some of the items like this one. One of the misconceptions that the students have, I think, is that they start, when I counted, when I counted, I started this as 1. I think I have some students who start here and want to use this as 1. This would be 0. This is the starting point. So this would be 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I think that might have been why some kids missed it. If that's why they missed it, they probably put eight units for their answer, which is incorrect. There's a, a trick that you could do if you are wanting to simply count uh, just the units. You could kind of maybe put a little X through each one. Like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the last one, seven. Now it's kind of messy, but if I had a pencil, I could easily have uh, filled those in, and, and that would be what I would do. So that, that's one way that you could solve it. You could just count them, starting like at this point. This would be our starting point, really, but you wouldn't start saying numbers until you're here, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or you could simply X out units as you went. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or you could look at the absolute values and, and, and use those to help you figure out the distance. You would focus on the uh, numbers that they do not have in common. I mean, here with that negative one, you could actually just you know cross out what they have in common and then focus on just what is different about the numbers and then add those absolute values. And we would add because we went from one quadrant to another. Now, let's look at a situation if we didn't go from one quadrant to another. Let's look at a different system situation there. Let me go ahead and clear my board. Okay, so in this situation, let's say that I've got B located at negative four, three. So negative four would be, here's negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. So here's negative four, and then I wanna go up to three. One, two, three. So at this point here, where I have negative four, three, we'll call that B. And I'm going to label it negative 4, 3. And my other coordinate, G, will be at negative 1, uh, 3. So here would be negative 1. And, well, but you know what? I wrote right where I needed the space. So I'll go ahead and put a bubble there. Let me clear that off. 
we'll go far back to the B. So here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and then I go up to 3. 1, 2, 3, and this gives me B. Like I said, that's negative 4, positive 3, and then G is negative 1. Here's negative 1, and then I go up 3. 1, 2, 3, and this is G, and that would be once again negative 1, 3. Now I could count. I could go ahead and just count from, from the distance. I could go ahead and say, well, here's one, two, three. I have three units there. I could um, X out, perhaps, units. I could go, you know, or, or fill them in, like there's one, two, three. Or I could look at what they have in common, cancel that out, because it tells me what line, uh, the number, the quadrants, the uh, the line lays on and focus on what they have different. So here we have three and three, so I'm not going to worry about the three and three. That just tells me that it's on this line here at three um, up this far on the y axis. And so I have negative four and negative one different. Now, because they both have the same sign, negative, I know that we didn't cross from one quadrant to another. We didn't. Uh, so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to subtract their absolute values. I'm going to subtract, and something I want to point out is look at the line. It almost looks like a subtraction symbol because it's just a straight line this way. So in this case, let's look at We could go absolute value of negative 4 is 4, subtract absolute value of negative 1, which is 1, which gives us 3. So we have some ways that kids can solve these types of problems if you're given points on a coordinate plane and you have to find the distance. Those are three ways that you can do it. Okay, I'm going to now go ahead and just try to work out a few problems with you where we just have uh, we just have coordinates given to us. We don't really have uh, a coordinate plane to use. Let's say we've got a situation like this. Let's say that we've got a coordinate that is negative 8 and 16, and our other coordinate is, is 4 and 16. I can see right off on the y-axis at 16, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that my line is going to be laying on the, uh, on the 16 level of the uh, y-axis. But I have two coordinates that are different. I have a negative 8 and I have a 4. Because this is a negative and this is a positive, I know that I'm going from one quadrant to another, so I'm going to add their absolute values. So the absolute value of negative 8 plus the absolute value of 4. And I can tell off it's going to be 12, because the absolute value of negative 8 is 8, and 4 more would be 12 units. So the distance between point negative 8, 16, and point 4, 16 would be 12 units. Let's do another one. This time, let's say that we have point 15, 7, and we also have point 15, negative 7. Now, I know we worked on problems like this, my students have, I've had several students say to me, you know, they'll say, Mr. Hall, I don't see the, um, what they have different. They, they have the same numbers in point, we'll say, we'll call this point A, as they do in point B. Well, what they're looking at is just simply the number. They're not looking at the sign. I mean, really, you know, this negative 7 is not 7. You know, I mean, without that, it's completely different from this 7. It's, it's the opposite of 7. So negative 7, the opposite of it would be positive 7. What they have in common is the 15. So I know that on that running through line, uh, I mean point 15 on the x-axis, we have this line segment that goes from 7 to negative 7. And I'll go ahead and not worry about the 15s. I'm just going to worry about this positive 7 and this negative 7. And because we have a positive and a negative, I know we go through from one quadrant to another, so I know I'm going to add those absolute values. So the absolute value of 7 plus the absolute value of negative 7 well, the absolute value of 7 is 7. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7, and that's going to be 14 units. So th that, to me, 
it, once you know the, the, the steps, it's real easy to find the distance using absolute values. It's, it's very easy. I hope that this video has helped uh, clear up a few misconceptions for my students and that it will help them master uh, uh, standard 6, number sense C8. Thanks for watching.